Within dreams, there are many different ways to move objects. I've broken them down into two categories, and I'm going to be going over them one by one. The two categories are directional movement and positional movement. Directional movement is very straightforward. Here I have a ball with a mover object, which has a given direction in which it moves. We can change this direction by moving this gizmo around, and that determines the exact angle and direction in which it's going to move. If I start time, we can see the ball moves in that direction as long as this mover is powered. In order to be precise about the direction, we can use this gizmo, or we can pass in a direction of movement, which would be a vector. Since there is no way to pass in a position to move towards, this is considered a directional mover and would not be a positional mover. Similarly, there's also an advanced mover. This has no gizmo to point. Instead, you must pass in the directions that you wish to move. This is very similar to passing a vector into the standard mover. But this way we can adjust the various speeds based on each axis, which can change how things work. There are no inputs to pass in here other than speed for the x, y, z axis as well as damping and strength. Outside of directional, we have positional movers. One such type of positional mover uses a teleporter. A teleporter takes in a tag as where to move towards, which we can either move there exactly to that spot, or we can match the target orientation, or both. I've created a tag called Go Here, which is a little bit ahead of this ball. And the teleporter will teleport the object to that tag based on the position of this gizmo. Since this gizmo is at the bottom of the ball, when I start time, this ball will move to that tag, and this gizmo will be exactly at that point. So when I start time, the bottom of the ball will be there. Here it is from another angle. We can see the ball instantly teleports. If we give partial power to a teleporter, it won't be instant. So here at zero power, it's not moving, and if we move this to point one, it will move to that position. It should be noted, however, that this is not a linear movement. It will start off moving much stronger, and the closer it gets to the point, the slower it will move, until eventually it reaches the point and stops. The more power you give it, the faster it will move, but it will still continue to have a nonlinear movement. As you can see, it starts off really strong and slows down towards the end. The other positional gadget is the follower. Now, we can pass a tag into the follower, and this again has its own gizmo, which I've placed at the bottom of the ball. So it's going to go to that tag yet again, but this time we can pass it a speed, and it can be linear. So if we only want to move at 6.2 meters per second, when we start time, it will only move at that rate and stop. You can see it's perfectly linear in terms of its speed. If we have lower than 100% damping, the gadget itself will go a little bit past and kind of bounce back and forth between the two. We can see it'll pass the gizmo and continue to back up and go forward until it eventually reaches the spot and stops. If what you're looking for is perfect movement, then 100% damping is the way to go. The damping and the strength can be adjusted for every axis, so if you want it to move perfectly in the X and Z coordinates, but have a little bit of bouncing in the Y, we can do so. If I move this gizmo up and turn the damping on the Y down, we can see that it kind of bounces up and down in the Y direction as it moves. 
but the x and z directions are perfectly in line. When there are two tags with the same name, with a follower attached or looking for that tag, the object will move to the tag that is closer to its current position when it starts. A follower doesn't have to take a tag. We can also pass it a target position. So here I have the values of 0 and 0, meaning this is just an empty position, which will give us 0, 0, 0, which is the center point here. And I've passed that into the target position. So when we start time with this, it will move the ball to 0, 0, 0, based on where this gizmo is. And of course, if we set damping all the way up, just like before, it will move there perfectly linearly and stop when it reaches the point. We can pass in two different locations to a follower if we're using the positional argument. Here we can see we have a location of 4, 0, which will move the ball right here. And we also have this other position, which is going to 0, 4, which moves the ball back there. Now if we plug both of these in, we can see by default it's on overwrite. And what will happen is it takes the direction vector of one location and the direction vector going to the other one and combines them. So it's not moving to either one, but instead moving to the combined direction and position. If we change this to blend instead, it will find the midpoint between the two. So if our point is here and here, it, will, it should move to the midpoint but exactly between those two positions, which it does. Now both the position and the tag for the follower can be used to move to precise locations if we're emitting an object with the tag on it. If we place a tag onto an object, we can put this somewhere here, like the top, for example, and we'll give it a name. And we can emit this object wherever we want if we pass in a position. We can place a follower on this object just like we did with the other ones, except this time we're going to new position. I'll give this 100% strength, 100% damping, and I'll move this value up a little bit. I have a timer here for three seconds, so every three seconds we'll emit the object into a random position and the ball will continue to follow and move to that position. We can see that every time a new object is emitted the ball will move there in a linear fashion until it stops and then a new tag is made. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please give me a thumbs up. And if you want to see more tutorials in the future, go ahead and subscribe. And if you have any other tutorials that you'd like to see, please leave a comment down below. Any feedback you have, I'd love to read that as well. I hope everyone's staying safe and doing well. I'll see you next time.